Hi, so in this video, I'm going to talk about two different approaches to teaching, especially related to grammar teaching. Okay, so we're going to look at the inductive way of teaching and the deductive way of teaching. Okay, they sound quite similar, so it's a little bit easy to get them mixed up, but they're very different. They kind of go in opposite directions. Okay, so you can see here on the first slide, inductive way of teaching starts with specific examples and then moves towards focusing on the general rule. Now the deductive approach to teaching goes the opposite way. So deductive approach starts with focusing on the general rule and then moves towards specific examples. Okay, so that's the basic way that these two approaches work. Now, of course, how you deal with the examples and the rules can change. You can have students finding the rules, discovering the rules, um, you know, what kind of activities and things. Um, so, you know, these approaches can change for different types of learners, you know, teaching inductively for young learners and teaching inductively for adults is going to be different, but they have this same basic structure of starting with uh, examples to rule for inductive and rule to examples for deductive. Okay, so in this video we're going to look at some examples and advantages and disadvantages and a few other tips as well. Okay, so first, just to kind of help you understand about this, I want you to have a look at this example. So this is a, a teacher talking at the beginning of a lesson and uh, let's let me read and you need to guess is this inductive way or deductive way. Okay. Hello everyone, today we're going to learn present perfect tense with past participle verbs. Present perfect tense is formed with the present tense forms of form of to have plus the past participle of the verb, which can be either regular or irregular in form. Okay, so is that inductive way or deductive way? Okay, now I chose this example because it's very explicitly deductive, okay? So this is very explicitly starting with the, the grammar and the rule, okay? So that's an example of a deductive way of teaching. Okay, so that is deductive. Let's have a look at the second example. Okay, so again, this is the beginning of a lesson. Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about life experiences. Here is a picture of me in Spain. I've been to Barcelona and I've seen the Sagrada Familia. I've eaten paella. I've had a picnic at Parkwell. Okay. Okay, so now is this inductive or deductive teaching? Now, the answer I guess is obvious because we've just done deductive. The answer, this is inductive. Okay, so this starts with examples. Now notice that in this language that the teacher is using, there are many examples of present perfect. Okay, so this is starting with examples and starting with context of use, um, which means the kind of situations or topics that we use, the specific language points that you're teaching. Um, so here we're starting with examples and in this lesson, maybe later on, you would start, the teacher would introduce or focus on the rules, perhaps with some student activities. Okay, so that's inductive teaching. All right, let's move on to looking at this in more detail. Okay, so as you've seen, deductive way is more focused on the rules at the beginning. So deductive teaching would start by maybe presenting the grammar and the form of what is going to be learned today. So you can see number one, comparative adjectives. The teacher would explain about er and than and, you know, the sentence structure or, or you know, ier or adding more for longer, um, longer words, longer adjectives. Okay, so here, uh, let's have a look in the green box. To compare things, we usually add er to the adjective and make a sentence with than. If the adjective is more than two syllables, we add more before it, okay? So that's a very explicit grammar explanation at the beginning. Number two, now let's practice. Okay, so you start with the rules and then you move on to practice. All right, so deductive way. Let's have a look at some advantages of this. It gets straight to the point. Um, so that's that could be a an, an advantage, right? You're not kind of like 
uh, working around the grammar or kind of giving examples and expecting students to absorb the grammar. You're just getting straight to the point. This is the structure. This is what we're learning. This is what we're going to practice today. OK, so that's an advantage. It might confirm students' expectations at education. If students expect things to be explained at the beginning of a lesson, then that might, uh, you know, that might fit with their expectations. That doesn't mean it's good. Doesn't mean it's bad specifically, but um, you know, if students expect that kind of teaching, then it is going to match their what they expect. Okay. And it allows to, for teachers to deal with any language points as they arise. Okay, so sometimes, you know, if, if a new language point arises, you might just want to be deductive about it because um, it's something that maybe the, you didn't expect. Um, you don't have examples prepared. So you might want to, um, you know, if, if a new language point comes up or if a student asks something about some content of a reading, like some grammar, uh, you might want to just explicitly deal with that point uh, quickly rather than trying to go with inductive way. Okay, some disadvantages. Starting with a grammar explanation is not interesting, especially for young learners, okay? So deductive way, you know, if students don't like that kind of teaching or in the case of young learners, it doesn't really match the way that they learn language, then deductive way is, is not going to be a, a good way of starting a lesson. Okay, it's also teacher-centered because it the focus on kind of explaining is down to the teacher. And every time you explain, you're taking away an opportunity for learners to find and discover themselves. Okay, so it is a very teacher-centered way of teaching. But as you can see, you know, that might be the student's expectation. So, okay. It is less memorable. Okay. So one thing uh, I keep talking about explaining, teachers explaining. Now explaining doesn't equal learning. Okay. So, you know, just because you're explaining something doesn't mean the students are going to remember it. Okay, what else? It's rule focused. Okay, so it's very much focused on rules at the beginning, rather than, um, you know, purpose, function, context of use, the kind of communicative language aspects of the language. Okay, so if you teach deductive ways, students might feel that, ah, you know, learning is just a series of rules that I have to learn. I have to rule, learn this rule and then next learn this rule. Okay, and it does kind of, you know, put rules at the forefront of your teaching. Okay, so let's move on to inductive way. I've got a, another example here. So you can see number one. Um, to, uh, let's have a look at the green box. Today we're going to buy a new phone together. Uh, let's have a look at these pictures, these phones, uh, and listen to me. The Galaxy phone is bigger than the LG phone. The iPhone is more expensive than the LG phone. Okay, so you have some examples here at the beginning that could be the teacher talking. The examples could be in a, a dialogue or a video or even like a reading, you know, could be some reading materials for the learners. But essentially, with an inductive way, is the examples are given the, you know, the forefront, uh, are put at the forefront first. And here you can see moving on to number two in the yellow box. After looking at some examples, then we do rule checking to check that students have understood the structures, they've internalized these new structures. Okay, so in this example, I've got a simple uh, gap fill. Uh, gap fills uh, are actually quite good for just checking grammar, okay? If you create the gap fill in a way that you're checking the the structure of the sentence, then I think they are they can be quite an effective way of, um, you know, checking that students have internalized these examples. So you can see the Galaxy phone is mm, than the LG phone, the iPhone is expensive than the LG phone. Okay, so students have to fill in those blanks there. Okay, now let's have a look at some advantages and disadvantages of inductive approach. Uh, rule discovery is more meaningful and memorable. Okay, so learners analyzing language, finding the structure themselves, guessing, extending the rules themselves, making new sentences, 
with those rules, that's going to be more memorable for the learners. Okay, as I mentioned, you know, explaining doesn't equal learning, but discovering and students finding the language themselves, that's probably going to be a better learning experience. Okay, it's more student centered as well because more of the responsibility is with the students. Okay. It involves problem solving. It can involve problem solving. So uh, learners may, uh, you know, depending on what kind of task they have for the grammar, they might be, uh, you know, solving problems related to the structure and the form. Maybe could be, for example, correcting mistakes, for example. OK, it encourages autonomy because the learners are responsible for finding the rules, guessing the rules, and then using those rules to make new examples or to communicate later on. Um, it, you're kind of training the students to do this thing themselves, right? If you use the deductive approach, you're kind of treating the students like, you know, just an empty box that needs to be filled with information. And that's not really uh, a way of encouraging autonomy and self-directed learning. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at some disadvantages now. So, inductive approach takes more time. Okay, so, you know, looking at examples, giving students opportunity to internalize this new language, and then checking that they've understood the, the rules or the structure of these examples takes more time than just explicitly explaining and getting straight to the point, okay? So, you know, sometimes that's going to be uh, an, an issue when you're teaching, um, you know, depending which approach that you uh, choose, okay? So, another thing is that students may hypothesize the wrong rule because you're not explaining, okay? The focus is on the examples, the meaning, the context of use. So you're teaching uh, in a way that isn't explicit and students may then guess the rule wrong, okay? They might get the rule wrong. So um, that's something to watch out for and you should have kind of checking built into uh, your lessons if you're using the inductive approach. Okay, it does take extra planning as well because, um, you know, the teacher needs to know the rule and the teacher needs to know the grammar point. Uh, of the lesson, but then the materials that you develop are kind of like skirting around the rule, okay? The examples, you might have reading materials or videos to give the examples, and then the activities as well, you know, are, have to be in a way that the students are showing that they know the rule, okay? So it does take a little bit extra planning. And uh, the to kind of mirror what we said about deductive, it may not fit with learners' expectations, okay? They may want to be more um, explicit, you know, in, in terms of learning, okay? So it might not fit with their examples, their expectations. Okay, so which approach to use? Let's have a look at this now. Um, okay, so um, in your teaching, I would suggest sometimes you would want to use inductive, sometimes you want to use deductive okay and sometimes this is down to the age of the learners so older learners can do explicit rule discovery which means that you know discussing together kind of like analyzing the language and trying to find the rule together they can use meta language to discuss rules okay so older learners can analyze language and talk about language in in an abstract way so depending on the grammar point, inductive or deductive approach may be best, okay? So some grammar points are going to be uh, better for deductive way, others are going to be better for inductive way, okay? Uh, inductive is seen as more meaning-focused and communicative, okay? So if you have more time and if that is the focus, kind of communication and practical kind of language skills and use, then inductive way uh, uh, could be a better approach. But test takers may prefer the deductive approach. Test takers probably, you know, they're a bit more pressured for time usually and they want to get straight to the point. So yeah, if, if there's a test coming, you may just want to be straight to the point in your teaching. 
Okay, so my, my general tip is to try to use both approaches in your teaching. Um, you know, be aware of the differences and every time you're teaching, kind of think about which way is going to be better for this grammar point um, and, you know, try to understand the context and the learners and choose the approaches that best fit your specific situation because there's no right or wrong answer with this. Okay. Okay, so a couple more tips then. Um, uh, so a tip for inductive teaching is focus on context of use. Now, I've mentioned this a few times in other videos, context of use. This means uh, the situation or the topic where we use the language. So it's kind of related to language functions, the purpose of using language. It's, but it's also kind of related to uh, situational target language, the situations. But it also includes the topics, okay? So here's a couple of examples. Okay, the first one is superlatives. Okay, so biggest, most, best, tallest, fastest, strongest, all of those kind of words, right? So we use superlatives to talk about kind of big, amazing things, right? So what are some examples of context of use? Well, for young learners, um, maybe dinosaurs could be a good topic for, for superlatives, right? Dinosaurs are big and heavy and strong and fast and, and so on, okay? So kind of like, uh, you know, dinosaurs might be a, a, a good topic for um, a good context for using superlatives. There's another example here of, um, uh, what is it, Mount Everest, okay? Um, so yeah, like the biggest mountain in the world and the longest lake in the world and the tallest tree in the world and things like that, okay? So that could be a good topic for context of use with superlatives also. Okay, one more example here, comparatives. We use comparatives to compare things. For example, when we're shopping, okay? Um, this is a, a nice idea. Uh, you may have seen these kind of cards before. It's a little bit like Pokemon. You know, Pokemon have like different scores and things, and they, they have different strengths and weaknesses. Well, these are called Trump cards, okay? Uh, nothing to do with the president of the USA. Um, this is a really old thing that kids used to play with years and years ago, Trump cards, okay? And the trump cards would have different topics, often things like cars um, or superheroes or, or even like Pokemon, for example. So they would collect these cars, cards and the cards have um, details like statistics uh, related to each thing. And the game, the different ways of playing this game, but often it's something like you choose one of the, the subjects and you choose a card and your opponent has to, uh, you know, they pick a card and if the, the the specific statistic or the stat is better, then they, they win that round, okay? Um, but this would this kind of idea of these kind of materials would be a nice example of um, something to use for teaching comparatives. You can compare, you know, which one is faster, which one is uh, uh, bigger, which one is longer, and so on. And in, in the case of um, superheroes, you know, similar kind of thing, like which one is stronger, and so on. Okay, so those are two examples of con uh, those are two examples of grammar points, and a few examples of contexts where you can use those grammar points. Okay. Okay, right. So I want to finish off with one more example about inductive way. Now, the reason why I include this is because um, I think most teachers understand deductive way and, and actually the kind of default for teachers is deductive, okay? So really I'm kind of trying to encourage you to use more inductive ways because that is seen as more communicative and it can be more effective if you do it well. Okay, so here's an example. We're going to talk about holidays now. This is like the introduction uh, of a lesson and this is me modeling the examples, okay? So here's a picture of my son. Okay, and we went to, uh, where did we go? We went to Thailand. Okay, so this is a holiday. We went to Thailand. We flew on an airplane and we ate um, food on the airplane as well. Okay, all right. So let me tell you more about my holiday. We went to the beach. We saw the sea and we played on the beach. That's my son again. Okay, we met my my parents actually we met my parents in thailand we drank some gin together and we had a good time 
We also met my brother and his girlfriend, and we rode on a boat together. We saw an elephant. Okay, we rode on an elephant. We saw an elephant. We made new friends. This is a cat that my son made friends with. And we swam in the sea. Okay, so this this is just kind of the beginning of the lesson where I'm giving some examples and setting the context of the lesson. Okay, now, what was the grammar point of this? Okay, obviously the teacher should be aware of this. So what was the grammar point? What kind of grammar was I trying to introduce for the learners? Okay, have a think about what kind of expressions I was using. Okay, now you may have guessed uh, simple past, which is right. Okay, so simple past. But also a bit more specifically, I was almost always using irregular past tense verbs. Okay, so the grammar was simple past, but also the focus of this lesson is going to be irregular past tense verbs. So think about what did I say? Okay, I said we went to Thailand. We ate food on an airplane, we swam in the sea, we made new friends, I met my grandparents, we drank some gin. All of those are irregular past tense verbs. Okay, So that is how I would introduce and start a lesson focused on this grammar point, but in an inductive way, because I wasn't explicit about the grammar that we're learning. This is just the first step, you know. The lesson would have many, many steps to kind of scaffold and practice and uh, for, give more examples. Okay, so I hope that video was useful to give you an introduction to inductive and deductive teaching. Uh, most teachers kind of fall into this habit of teaching deductively, okay? So I want to really kind of push you over and, and suggest, you know, think about things inductively and try to focus on context of use, uh, try to focus on examples and meaning before you move on to other things like rule discovery. Okay, I hope that was useful. Thank you very much.